Becoming a blockchain developer is one of the best ways to change your career and land a high paying job in 2023. The web 3.0 industry is one of the highest paying fields in tech. It's incredibly remote friendly so you can work from wherever you want. And what's more is you get to work on super exciting technology building the future of the internet. See, blockchain technology is quickly permeating mainstream use cases with adoption from major brands like Twitter, Instagram, and Starbucks. And it holds the potential to revolutionize every aspect of our online lives with NFTs, DeFi, gaming, metaverse, and so much more. So all this means there's a massive opportunity for you to become a blockchain developer so that you can land one of these highly paid jobs, you know, build your own application that other people will use and make money, or, you know, build your own trading bots with DeFi, flash loans, whatever. And so that's exactly what I'm going to show you how to do in this video today as a blockchain developer myself who works this technology on a daily basis that's helped thousands of people become real world blockchain developers. I'm going to give you the step by step roadmap on how to become a highly paid blockchain developer in 2023 from scratch, even if you've never coded before. I'm going to cover everything you need to know, like what programming language you should learn. Yeah, which blockchain should you use? How much money can you make? A step-by-step -step plan on how to go from nothing to getting hired and answer a bunch of frequently asked questions like, should you learn blockchain first or some other programming language? So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory. On this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. And I've put a ton of time into creating this in-depth guide just for you. And the only thing that I ask in return is that you smash that like button down below this video. You know, go ahead and click it and then subscribe to this channel and, you know, share this video with other people. And if you're fired up with everything that you've learned today in this video and you're ready to take action, then I can help you take the next step towards changing your career and landing a six-figure job over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's jump into this. Let's look at the complete roadmap for becoming a blockchain developer in 2023. So here's a brief overview of what we're going to cover in today's presentation. I've put some timestamps down in the description below. That's going to help you navigate through each point in the video. If you want to book, bookmark it, come back and check out it later. But here's a quick overview of what we're going to cover. Let's start off with the opportunity for blockchain developers in 2023. So to put it in simple terms, there is a massive opportunity for developers in 2023 in the blockchain industry. Let's talk about why. So, you know, we've seen an explosion of use cases come onto the scene over the past few years uh, with decentralized finance, NFTs, et cetera, et cetera. We've seen all these companies, you know, birth from the crypto ecosystem out, but this is getting into mainstream adoption with people like Starbucks, you know, adopting NFTs for their brand, uh, people like Instagram incorporating NFTs in their platform. And there's so many more just like this because there's all these companies that are trying to essentially make a massive bet on where the space is headed over the long term. And they're all pouring into the industry trying to get ahead of the curve. And now what do they all need in order to make these projects actually take off? Well, they need blockchain developers. And so if you look at it, that's where the opportunity comes into play. You have massive demand on the company side and you have a really small supply of developers who actually possess these skills. And when you have demand that's really big and supply that's really small, well, simple supply and demand economics, that means the price of compensation goes up for people who have these technical skills, aka blockchain developers. So if you compare it to like full stack web developer on the same platform, the national average is about $109,000 and mobile developers about $107,000 as a national average. So the quick takeaway from that is that blockchain on average is about 50% more lucrative. So uh, again, we can break the data down more. You can see there's a lot of people are skewing that average, you know, making up into the, you know, deep six figure range. I even see opportunities for blockchain developers making the seven figure range as, you know, founders and having equity opportunities. Okay. They definitely exist. But even here, realistically down the lower range, there's a lot of people who are making, you know, a healthy six figure salary. And so you can easily break six figures, with a little bit of experience, and you can go way into the six figure range with a lot of experience. So that gives you some upward growth potential throughout your career. And when I'm personally evaluating an opportunity, I want to know what the long-term potential is. It's got good short-term potential, but it's also got really good upside over the long-term. And so the financial opportunity looks great for blockchain developers, but that's not the only thing I care about. It's probably not the only thing you care about either. So there's all these other great benefits, like it's super remote friendly. So in many cases, you can work pretty much from wherever you want to. You can also become a freelancer. You don't have to get a full-time job somewhere. And so many other crazy intangibles like being on the inside of the industry and watching trends emerge before they blow up. It's absolutely crazy. And, you know, my other favorite thing about blockchain is that there's so many different ways to make money with these skills, okay? You know, if you are an ambitious founder and you want to go build an entire project from scratch, like the next billion-dollar DeFi protocol, then, you know, you have that opportunity before you with relatively low competition. And even on the way less ambitious, side, you know, there's still plenty of opportunities for people to create their own applications, either as a side project or maybe turn into a full-time project. You know, one example are non-fungible tokens or NFTs. You know, NFTs are not that hard to create on the grand scheme of things. And we've even seen people like the 12-year-old boy who made, you know, $400,000 on his summer holiday 
And also, you know, stories like this of the 12 year old girl who made nearly $4 million selling her own NFT projects. And even if creating your own app and NFT isn't your own thing, there's all these different ways to make money with bots. So here's an example of developers making $10,000 per day uh, with their trading bot on the blockchain. So now I know a lot of people instantly hear trading bot and instantly think, hey, that sounds like a scam because lots of trading bots are scams because they're out there trying to predict you know, future cryptocurrency prices and they're often wrong and they blow up and lose you money. But this is different, okay? So these are trading bots that deal with cryptocurrency arbitrage trading. So basically what that is, is like there's all these cryptocurrency exchanges out in the blockchain, decentralized cryptocurrency exchanges that have price discrepancies. So if you could buy uh, a token for $100 on one exchange and sell it on another exchange for $101, you know, that's a $1 profit. And if you could scale that out with uh, multiple units of the same cryptocurrency or multiple transactions, that can add up quickly. And you know, here's an example. I just pulled up an arbitrage transaction today uh, just to show you for this video. You know, Here's a, a single transaction where a developer made a $7,000 profit uh, in one go. And the craziest thing about these trading bots is you don't have to have any money to trade because you can do them with flash loans. Okay, And there's no risk that you can lose the money that you're borrowing whenever you're doing this because all this stuff pro plugs into smart contracts, which we'll talk about later in this video, that will only execute if the trade's profitable. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications. We occasionally do master classes on exactly how to do this. And you're going to find out about those if you follow along. All right, so that's an overview of the opportunity for blockchain developers in 2023. Okay, it's one of the highest paying fields in tech. There's lots of things you can do with blockchain besides just getting a job and you become a freelancer and create your own apps and create your own bots. But whatever you decide to do, all right, there's a core set of skills that you need to master in order to take advantage of this big opportunity. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about right now in this section. What skills are in demand that you have to know in order to do any of these things? Well, in order to answer that question, you know, let's talk about what does a blockchain developer even do? Like if you're going to this path, like sometimes people confuse, like I don't, I don't even know what it means to be a blockchain developer. Well, let's look at the use cases that you're probably going to be working in if you're a blockchain developer. So the major use cases for blockchain are decentralized finance or DeFi. Okay, this is basically taking existing financial products and moving them over to the blockchain, things like savings, lending, trading, and even some new blockchain specific ones that don't really exist in the real world, like flash loans, for example, uh, non fungible tokens or NFTs. So you might have seen like crypto collectibles. This has a pretty been a pretty big trend over the past couple of years. Uh, but really, we're just scratching the surface for what we can do with NFTs. We can do so many other things like like uh, you know, intellectual property, real world assets like real estate, so much more. Uh, gaming, where you can actually take like in-game items, move them out of the game onto a blockchain with NFTs, uh, or play to earn games. You know, Web 3.0, creating the internet of value and a censorship resistant web. Uh, Metaverse, where you can create 3D experiences to combine with blockchain. And this list is probably going to continue to grow in 2023. And I'll keep you updated on this channel as those things emerge. All right, so those are some of the major use cases for blockchain technology. But what about blockchains make those things possible or said a different way like why would you use a blockchain in the first place well the core values of blockchain are decentralization so instead of centralized control like you see in the web 2.0 world okay we have decentralization where a community owns something and everyone participates in running it rather than just a single person uh, this makes blockchain censorship resistant so nobody can stop you from doing something on a blockchain and once your activity is on the chain it's there forever like nobody can delete it okay it's trustless or trust minimized so you can see how everything works and you know what's going to happen before you do it. And also that gives way the added benefit of transparency. So if something on chain isn't completely decentralized or completely trustless, then you know exactly you know what happened. There's always a record on, on chain and that gives you an added benefit that you don't get always in the web 2.0 world. All right, and so those are the values that make all these other use cases that I was talking about possible. Things like you know decentralized finance, NFTs, gaming, and so much more. But how does that actually work? Okay, so let's kind of jump in this next question was, you know, what is a blockchain? How does it work? This is going to get into some theory, but this is an incre incredibly important thing to understand if you're going to understand, like, you know, what do you need to know to become a blockchain developer? This will set the foundation for that. So, the best way to think about a blockchain is actually a worldwide computer that a bunch of different people participate in running. So, you can see on my uh, screen here, like, this is a computer, this is a computer, this is a computer, this is a computer, and they all talk to one another. So each of these uh, computers are called nodes, okay? And these nodes all work together to help run the blockchain. So let's take a simple use case of sending cryptocurrency, okay? From, let's say I send you one Ether or one Ethereum on the Ethereum blockchain, right? If I'm going to send that from my wallet to yours, basically what happens is I would submit that transaction to the blockchain. Okay. I would sign it with my wallet or my private key. Okay. And then essentially, you know, everyone or most people on the network would participate in saying that, yes, this person authorized a transfer of funds from my account to your account. Okay. And they would participate in validating that transaction and including it into the blockchain and storing it forever because each of these computers gets a copy of all of the 
transactions that have ever made up the blockchain and all of the code uh, that's on the blockchain as well. Because you know, at the end of the day, blockchains are just big databases, the big public ledgers of transactions that are grouped together into bundles of records are called blocks, which are chained together to make up the blockchain. And each computer and the network is responsible for maintaining that chain and making sure that it's, you know, has integrity from all past transactions and all future transactions. And this use case that I'm talking about, you know, cryptocurrency, basically just sending around from one account to another and keeping track of all the balances. That's why you want to do it on a blockchain, because all this data is, you know, censorship resistant. It's immutable. It can't change. OK, and that's why you want to do the blockchain and not like some other way. So if you're going to build this in a Web 2.0 way with a centralized database like MySQL or PostgreSQL, right, you could have some bad actor who could just instantly change your balance on a whim and say, oh, well, you don't have any money anymore. Right. You don't want to do it that way. You want to do it in an open fashion where everybody you know participates in running this chain just like this so that's what gives birth to the basic use cases of you know just cryptocurrency transactions that's really what blockchain was used for in the first place before we had all these other blockchains out there right we had bitcoin first then we had ethereum and then all these other blockchains that came onto the scene to do much more things than just cryptocurrency transactions actually creating full-blown programs uh with smart contracts okay and that's what really gives birth to all these other use cases like i'm talking about like DeFi, nfts gaming and so much more. So what are smart contracts? Well, simply put, they are just programs that run on a blockchain. Again, before I was talking about how a blockchain is a worldwide computer, of course, it can process simple cryptocurrency transactions, but it can also uh, execute pretty sophisticated programs with smart contracts. And that's a lot of what blockchain developers do is creating these smart contracts. And they're the building blocks of much more com complicated um you know, blockchain programs. We'll get into that a little bit more in later sections. But, you know, what about smart contracts makes these blockchain applications possible versus doing it some other way? So again, they embody the values of blockchain technology. They're decentralized. So, you know, all the different nodes in the network participate in running these programs together. That's what makes it a worldwide computer. Okay, they're censorship resistant. Uh, once the smart contract's out there, it's immutable. It can't change. Okay, they can't be censored or taken down by somebody else. They're trustless so you or trust minimized, I should say in most cases, because you can see exactly how the code works and what's going to happen before you do anything. And that also adds this sort of transparency value like I was talking about as well. And these smart contracts, you know, are the building blocks of these other use cases and why they're possible on blockchain in the first place. So like decentralized finance or DeFi. So, you know, you can create your own tokens on blockchain support smart contracts without creating your own blockchain from scratch. So we see this with like stable coins. It's one of the most popular DeFi use cases, you know, savings and lending. You could do that on blockchain with smart contracts in a way that you really can't do in the traditional world. In addition to things like flash loans, like there's no real way to do a flash loan in traditional finance or in Web 2.0. You can only do it with blockchain and smart contracts. It's the same thing with non-fungible tokens or NFTs, okay? Um, that's the idea of, you know, ownership over digital items in a completely decentralized way. So, of course, we got crypto collectibles, but what if you wanted to create, you know, intellectual property rights that do not have an intermediary? Well, you can create a non-fungible token to do that, and then other people can custody their own funds, move them around whenever they want to, sell them to other people, doesn't matter, okay? They're also you know, digitally scarce, so no one can ever decide to create any more of these non-fungible tokens. The blockchain actually enforces that scarcity. Same thing with gaming, all right? We've got lots of things like play to earn, so you can earn cryptocurrency in a totally tr trustless way, but you can also do things like take in-game items out of the game and move them onto a blockchain. There's no good way where right now with the Web 2.0 world, you could actually play a game, earn something, and then take it and leave the game. But you could do that with blockchain. Same thing with Web 3.0, you can create a censorship web. Uh, I know there's lots of different things that mean Web 3.0. You could say this entire list is Web 3.0. But basically what I mean is censorship resistant to websites. So let's say you want to create a website that couldn't be taken down by anybody else. You could put that on IPFS. If you wanted to create a social network where you wanted to make sure that you weren't being deplatformed or shadow banned, you could do that with Web 3.0. And the same thing for Metaverse. So that's all about creating, you know, uh, 3D worlds, you know, combined with blockchain. But there's still this idea of owning things in the Metaverse. If you want to own a plot of land, you can do that with blockchain without somebody else's control. Or you want to have some NFTs that you can buy and sell into the Metaverse, you can do that as well. And we're really just scratching the surface on what's even possible. The metaverse is kind of a nebulous concept, but that's uh, what people are currently doing. All right, so that's an overview of how blockchain works and how it empowers all these other use cases that you really wouldn't want to do some other way. You'd want to do it with a blockchain. Now let's get to the next question, which is, you know, what kind of blockchain developer should you be? All right, we're going to get into the programming languages and exact skills you need to learn. But before you even get to that point, there's a fork in the road and you have to choose which direction you're going to go so that you can find the right tools to get the job done. So I'm going to roughly... Uh, 
categorize blockchain developers into two main categories. All right, the first is like an application developer. This is creating something that the user can actually see and interact with. And the other is going to be like a core or an infrastructure developer. So what, what's the difference? Okay. So like a core developer is somebody who's like actually building blockchains themselves or smart contract platforms, okay, or protocols that people use. And also infrastructure developer might be like somebody creating, um, you know, running nodes for people like a staking services or maybe creating uh, decentralized Oracle networks that pull outside data and put them onto the blockchain. Okay, so um, I'll, put, I'll say this. Unless you have a really good reason to go down the core or infrastructure developer path, then I would highly recommend that you go down the application developer path for a couple reasons. Okay, so number one, you know, core is a lot harder to learn uh, if you're just a beginning programmer, or even if you're an experienced developer already. It's way more abstract, and there's a lot of stuff you have to understand from a computer science uh, standpoint to really be an effective core developer. And they're also, it's not as in demand of a skill as application developer, right? There's there's lots more jobs open for blockchain application developers rather than core or infrastructure developers. So that's what I'd say if you're trying to you know, figure out which one to go, I highly recommend becoming an application developer. That's what I personally focus on. It's uh, easier for uh, beginners and other uh, experienced programmers to transition into that specialty. And the demand is huge. There's tons of job openings for application developers. So we you know what type of things are you creating as a blockchain application developer if that's the track that you go down? Again, I highly recommend that's the track that you go down. Well, you'd be creating things like smart contracts, like I was talking about earlier. These are the immutable programs that are on the blockchain. They're the building blocks of decentralized applications or dApps. And then you're also going to be doing things like creating other things that allow people to use these smart contracts, okay? Because at the end of the day, if you're going out to use a blockchain-based application, there's typically some sort of user interface that you're interacting with, right? So if you go to Uniswap, uh, the most popular decentralized cryptocurrency exchange out there, and you're swapping tokens, all right, from your wallet, then you're looking at a website, that website's talking to blockchain, and then, you know, it, it uses smart contracts to facilitate that transfer. And many blockchains also have you know, backends associated with them. Maybe they have some sort of data or business logic to the application that they keep off of chain and that backend is maintained by a developer as well. All right, and so if you're going down the blockchain application developer track, then you're essentially going to want to have a strong understanding of how blockchains work in the first place, but then your top priority skill is going to be to learn how to create smart contracts that you can actually create uh, blockchain applications. I and mean, that's the lifeblood of what makes a blockchain application in the first place are the smart contracts. And then you want to pair that with some sort of secondary skill or maybe even two secondary skills. I'd say the first priority is to create a user interface, like a website that people can use to talk to the blockchain and then also if you need to maybe some sort of back end that also operates in tandem with this so those are the types of uh, skills that sort of out a company with uh, becoming a blockchain application developer so now what I want to do is basically look at some real world blockchain applications out there okay and then actually talk about how they work behind the scenes talk about the smart contracts actually look at them okay and then Talk about what you'd be doing as a blockchain developer if you were going to create this real world application. What's happening on the back end uh, with the smart contracts? What's happening on the front end with the website? If there's any type of server uh, used in this for a uh, web 2.0 back end, we'll talk about that as well. So let's go ahead and talk about those one by one. All right, so let's start off with Uniswap, which is probably the most popular blockchain application out there. So what is it? Well, it's a decentralized cryptocurrency exchange or a DEX. All right, it runs totally on a blockchain. It's different from other centralized cryptocurrency exchanges or stock exchanges that you might use in regular finance, okay? So how does it work? Well, basically, you go to the website, Uniswap, you connect to it with your MetaMask wallet, okay? Uh, that's a blockchain wallet. And then you essentially can just trade cryptocurrency directly from your wallet. You can tell it which cryptocurrency you have and then which cr cryptocurrency you want. You click swap, you sign the transaction with MetaMask, and then that submits it to the blockchain, and then the entire transfer happens there. Okay, so let's talk about, a little bit more about how it works. So the actual cryptocurrencies that you are swapping on top of Uniswap are mostly ERC-20 tokens. Okay, so what is that? Well, basically, the cool thing about, you know, cryptocurrencies, or excuse me, the cool thing about uh, smart contract platforms like Ethereum and other EVM compatible chains is that you can create new cryptocurrencies without creating your own blockchain. So that's one use case for smart contract development to create cryptocurrencies from scratch. You can see all these different cryptocurrencies on here. Uh, almost all of these are ERC-20 tokens. The main exception here, of course, is Ether, the native cryptocurrency of the Ethereum blockchain itself. So 
you know, if you're a blockchain developer in this case, you can create a brand new cryptocurrency uh, with smart contracts with Solidity. That's one thing you could do as a blockchain developer to help build out the Uniswap ecosystem. But where do these cryptocurrencies come from when you're actually using Uniswap? Okay, so you have to think about it like this. Uniswap basically works like a vending machine. Lots of smart contracts work this way. You just tell it the cryptocurrency that you have in your wallet, and then boom, it swaps tokens for you like a vending machine. But where are all the snacks inside the vending machine? Where do they actually live? This is the cryptocurrency in this case. Well, they live on the blockchain in the smart contracts that power Uniswap. So Uniswap is what's called an automated market maker. Okay, It works fundamentally differently from other centralized cryptocurrency exchanges or like stock exchanges, for example, that you might use on the internet. Okay, because all the cryptocurrency is parked on the application by third party liquidity providers who just take their cryptocurrency, park it in the applications, so they can earn, you know, passive income for doing this. And then Uniswap gets money that it can give to other people whenever they swap tokens. And they, they live in these liquidity pools in the back end that are powered by these smart contracts. So if you want to check those out, you can actually look at the Uniswap smart contracts directly on a block explorer like Etherscam, okay? So you can just look up Uniswap version three. Here's the smart contract code. This is the actual Solidity code that's written for the smart contracts that's running on chain, okay? So you can browse through that, all right? And then you can also see the code for the Uniswap front-end application on the Uniswap um, GitHub repository. It's completely open source. If you wanna see everything that runs this website behind the scenes, you know, this is all the code for it, okay? So let's break that up in the developer responsibilities. If you were to create Uniswap from scratch or you were to contribute to it or something like that, if you want to create a portfolio project, that'd be a great one for you to create. You want to create the smart contracts, okay? You want to do that with the Solidity programming language. You want to put them on a blockchain like Ethereum, okay? That's the back-end side of things. The back-end is the blockchain side of things. The smart contracts are what you're actually creating as a developer with Solidity. And then you want to create some sort of front-end application, okay? Like the one you're seeing right here, uh, this is a website. It's written in HTML, CSS, and also JavaScript. That's the big thing that gives it, you know, functionality. And you're probably going to want to use some modern uh, JavaScript framework like React JS, so that you can, you know, compartmentalize your code into reusable components and make the development process much smoother and quicker, so that you're not have to writing all this functionality from scratch. And so if you're going to create something like this, again, you need to know the smart contract, but you also need to know the front end development to create the website. Now, another thing I'll say is there's lots of opportunity for you to be a front end developer specifically for Web 3.0. Let's say you went down this road and you want to specialize in front end development or maybe user interface development. OK, well, then you can do that. All right. But I highly recommend understanding how to create smart contracts, how blockchains work, because at the end of the day, you're creating front end features. That you need to talk to those that's some really specific languages and libraries that we'll get into later. But if you have that skill set about how to do the basics of the back end, it's tremendously going to help you out in your front end development if you're trying to specialize in blockchain. All right, so what about if you wanted to create a non fungible token or an NFT? So let's just look at one of the most popular examples like the Board Ape Yacht Club, for example. What if you wanted to create Board Apes uh, from scratch? Okay, so first of all, you need a smart contract that handles the NFT itself or the actual uh, non-fungible token. That smart contract can be written in Solidity, okay? But let's talk about how an NFT even works in the first place. So it is a non-fungible token. I'll break that down. So the token is the smart contract, but it's non-fungible in the sense that each of the tokens uh, are not interchangeable. So if you think about a cryptocurrency, like a Bitcoin, for example, uh, it doesn't matter whether you had the first Bitcoin mine or the last one, you can trade any Bitcoin for a different one. Uh, similarly, you can trade any dollar for another US dollar. They're worth the exact same amount. That's what a fungible token is, but a non-fungible token is different. All the tokens are worth different amounts because they're all different, okay? So you can see that on a website like OpenSea. Like this board ape looks like this, and this one looks like this. It's got different characteristics, different backgrounds, different facial expressions. And, you know, people, um, for that reason, they can also have different levels of rarity to them. So the market might, you know, assign a different value to each one of those collectibles, like this one's 71 ETH, uh, this one's like 75 ETH, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So um, the other thing you have to understand about with smart contracts for non-fungible tokens is that once they're on the blockchain, they can't change. And so that's what governs the actual digital scarcity behind the NFTs themselves. You can see, you know, there's only ever going to be 9,999 board apes inside the smart contract is the code that basically says like, hey, this is all the board apes that it's ever going to be. We can't create any more from scratch. That's what digital scarcity is. Uh, they're decentralized, so you can trade them to whatever wallet you want to. You can list them on a third party exchange like OpenSea or a marketplace, I should say, uh, in a completely permissionless way.
And so that's the lifeblood of that NFT is the actual NFT smart contract that handles that digital scarcity and then also you know facilitates the transfer the buying and selling of the nfts okay so the cool thing about nfts is they're pretty easy to create on the grand scheme of things you don't have to code out everything from scratch because they follow a very specific standard called the erc721 standard this just makes basically makes sure that they're compatible with things like nft marketplaces your blockchain wallet etc etc and because they're so standardized like you can use a third-party library so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel whenever you're creating an nft from scratch so you can use library like open zeppelin that's got solidity contracts that you can just customize to create your own nft project okay now that's what you're going to do primarily as a blockchain developer create that nft you can use a library like this do it in solidity but let's talk about the actual pictures for the nfts themselves okay so you know the smart contract you know governs the entire nft collection okay i'll show this on my screen basically uh it you know determines which token belongs to which wallet uh with this smart contract on the blockchain but where do the pictures go so the pictures don't actually go on the blockchain okay they're way too big it'd be cost prohibitive to put those pictures of monkeys on the blockchain so you put them somewhere else and the most common way to do this with nfts is to use a decentralized file storage protocol like ipfs for example you can see those here and then you put the reference to those images back into the smart contract on the blockchain itself so that's another good thing to know as a blockchain developer is ipfs so what is it it's a decentralized file storage system that works kind of like a blockchain but not really it's just a bunch of different nodes that all talk to one another but they just store files distributed across all these different nodes and whenever you put a file maybe a picture a video whatever it is in this case it's probably going to be a picture for the nft you just put on ipfs it gives you back a hash and then you store that back in your smart contract uh, to create the nft uh, on the blockchain itself so that's another thing you want to understand as a blockchain developer in this case that's the back end is, is the blockchain with the smart contract also the files on ipfs and then finally if you're going to create an nft project you probably still want to have some sort of front-end application because most um you know nfts uh come from an nft drop where essentially you create a website uh like the board api club did you advertise when you're going to uh, hold your NFT drop and you create the NFTs from scratch. Everybody shows up with their wallets. They're ready to go. They're super excited. They've been told, you know, hey, in a couple of weeks, we're going to drop this NFT. They connect their wallet with MetaMask and then they, uh, you know, buy the NFT basically from the drop in order to add it to their wallet. And then they could list it on a, a third party marketplace like OpenSea, for example. So if you're going to do that, you, of course, want to create some sort of front end website in JavaScript. You want to use a library like Ethers.js to let people connect their wallets to it and then do the mint. And that can you know create the uh, NFTs from scratch. You get the money as a developer and then uh, they'll get the NFT sent to their wallet. So we occasionally do a masterclass on this, on this channel too about how to create your own generative NFT drop. Uh, if you want to see how to do all this step by step, definitely stick around and you'll find out about those the next time we do one. All right, so let's look at one final example here that's significantly different from the other two. And that's like, what if you wanted to create a blockchain-based mobile application? Now, not everything's a perfect fit for creating a mobile application with blockchain, but one of the best use cases is actually creating a blockchain wallet. So I'm just going to pull up Argent as an example. There's plenty of different blockchain wallets out there, uh, but Argent's a pretty good one. It's not a sponsor video or anything like that. I'm just going to use it as an example here. Okay, so basically what it does is it lets you download the, the app onto your phone and then you can basically buy cryptocurrency with it. You can uh, do transactions on a blockchain. You can send those funds that you just bought to an external wallet. Uh, you can use dApps inside of it, like you can earn yield on your crypto directly from the wallet and so much more. So let's talk about each of those different functionalities. Okay, let's start off with the actual mobile development itself. So there's lots of different ways that you can do uh, mobile development in and of itself, right? You can you know, create it in the native language for that particular uh, operating system. Like if you're going to create an iOS app, you could do it in Swift natively for that particular operating system. Or you could do it in a cross-platform way where you could build it in JavaScript with something like React Native, and then that can compile your application so you can distribute it on the iOS app store and also the Android app store as well. So I'm just going to talk about it in terms of the JavaScript way of doing things, uh, just so that's easier to understand. So let's just say that you're going to build a mobile application for iOS and also um, Android with React Native using JavaScript. So let's say that you're going to build something like Argent. So what would you need to do? Well, first of all, you need to be able to take people's credit cards so they can buy cryptocurrency, okay? So you need to understand how to use a payment gateway in Web 2.0 to actually capture that payment so that you can, like, they can link up their debit card or credit card, whatever it is, to make the cryptocurrency purchase. And then you need to be able to actually, you know, 
put cryptocurrency in their account and then let them withdraw it onto the blockchain itself. So how would you do that? Well, the first thing you need to understand is that you have to be able to store private keys for the user, you know, securely on the device. So basically, you need to understand how private key storage, how to do that uh, in an encrypted way that doesn't have any security issues. That's a pretty significant thing. And then you need to let them be able to do, do transactions inside the application, maybe using different blockchains and also transfer funds out of, the, all, out of that wallet to maybe a third party wallet. So that's where you have to actually connect your React Native application uh, to the blockchain itself. So you want to use, since we're using JavaScript, you can use some sort of third-party library uh, like Ethers.js to connect your mobile application to the blockchain that's going to let you talk to a node and then assign transactions on the user's behalf from the device itself with their private key that you're storing in an encrypted way. And then also letting them authorize transfers out of the application, maybe to withdraw to a third-party wallet. You want to make that uh, transaction on behalf of the user as well. So that's an overview. There wouldn't really be that many smart contracts in this case. It's mostly just mobile development and then also understanding the blockchain side of things. Again, you could specialize as a mobile developer, but I highly recommend understanding how all the blockchain stuff works underneath the hood if you're going to go down that road. All right, so now let's talk about which programming languages you should learn and which blockchains you should use. Because I'm going to really answer these questions at the same time because they kind of go hand in hand. So let's look at the different options out there for programming languages when you're going to, going to become a blockchain developer. So we'll start off with Solidity. Okay, so Solidity is the number one language used for writing smart contracts really across the entire blockchain ecosystem. All right, they're primarily for Ethereum, but you can use Solidity on lots of other blockchains that are called EVM compatible chains where you can write contracts with Solidity and still run them on those blockchains, okay? Let's look at some other options. There's things like, you know, Rust, uh, C and C++. So if you're looking to create, you know, smart contracts for the Solana ecosystem, you definitely want to focus on something like Rust. All right. So those are probably the two primary candidates for creating smart contracts themselves. But if you're going to become a blockchain developer, like I was showing you in all the previous examples, you're probably going to want to be able to do some other things like create user interfaces, you know, write tests for your smart contracts, maybe write some scripts, do some backends, something like that, front ends, back ends. And that's where a couple of other programming languages come onto the scene. So there's JavaScript. This is a really popular example. So if you're going to create a website, you're probably going to be doing that in JavaScript, some type of user interface, like the mobile applications, like I showed you a second ago. But then also Python is another popular example because you can do things like uh, automations that interact with the blockchain. You can write, you know, tests, you can write scripts uh, when you're developing smart contracts, just like you can in JavaScript. So now if you're totally starting from square one and you want my opinion on what you should learn and which blockchain you should focus on, what you should do, then I'm going to tell you exactly what that is right now. So if you have a really compelling reason to do one of these things, by all means, do it. But let me give you my opinion and stance if you're a brand new developer or if you're going to uh, transition into blockchain as a different developer. I would first and foremost start off where the actual demand is, okay? So let's go ahead and use some data to look at that. So you can look at the top uh, total value locked on all the different chains and see that by many metrics, you know, Ethereum is the largest uh, ecosystem by a long shot with over 50% of the market share of all the total value locked across all the blockchains. You can look at other metrics like transactions per day and active wallets, okay? And you can also look at the number of monthly active developers on ecosystems like Ethereum compelled to all these other chains. So you want to go where the demand is and you want to go where the developers are for lots of different reasons. OK, so I'll talk about those reasons here more in a minute. But, you know, my first recommendation, if you're going to learn a blockchain is to learn Ethereum and learn how to create smart contracts for Ethereum, because that's where all the demand is. That's where all the developers are headed. And that's actually a good thing. You might think like, oh, if all the developers are going that direction, um, it's going to be more competitive. But that's the wrong way to think because there's more demand than there is supply and the demand is outpacing the supply. And you want to go where there are other developers because you want to have tools to build applications, okay? You don't want to go into an ecosystem that's much smaller and less developed where you don't have libraries to do certain things that you want to do. You also want to go into an ecosystem where, uh, you know, people can help you if you get stuck. There's actually learning resources out there. You can reach out to other developers to figure things out. You want to be able to Google a uh, question on Stack Overflow and find the answer. And you're going to get that in Ethereum and maybe not so much in other smaller ecosystems, okay? Now, the other big benefit of Ethereum, like I was talking about a second ago, are these EVM compatible chains. So basically, if you can develop for Ethereum, you can develop for all these other blockchains that are also in high demand, like uh, Binance Smart Chain, um, you know, in the Ethereum layer twos, like Arbitrum, uh, Optimism, you can use Polygon, right, Phantom, et cetera, et cetera, Avalanche, whatever. There's all these different uh, blockchains that work kind of like Ethereum because they're EVM compatible. That's the Ethereum virtual machine that makes up that world computer. And so that's the blockchain you should use. 
You should use Ethereum as always benefits. You know, it's where the developers are. That's an indication of demand. It's also an indication of help and resources if you get stuck. And those skills transfer to all these other things out there, okay? Now, let's talk about the actual programming languages themselves. So, if you're going to, uh, you know, program for Ethereum, you, of course, need to focus on and get good at Solidity as your primary uh, effort, okay? This is where you're going to be creating the smart contracts that are the building blocks of blockchain applications. You need to learn Solidity if you're going to do that for Ethereum. Again, if you do that for Ethereum, you can put these on all these other blockchains like Polygon, Binance Smart Chain, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Now, you could do something like a Viper. I don't recommend Viper. I highly recommend sticking with Solidity, okay? And that's going to preclude you from going on the track like Rust or C++. Now, here's another big reason to go down the Solidity track, to go down the Ethereum track, is it's a lot easier to learn than these other programming languages like Rust or C++, okay? Some of these are going to have a lot more low-level interactions with them, uh, where Solidity is much more high-level. The syntax for Solidity is very beginner-friendly. It uh, looks a lot like JavaScript, okay? Uh, and so if you've got any type of programming background, you're going to pick up Solidity very quickly. And also if you're a new programming language, so you're, sorry, if you're, new, if you're a new developer, you can learn Solidity as your first programming language. And it's a pretty easy one to pick up on the grand scheme of things. And so that's another big reason to choose Solidity over something else that's way harder for beginners to learn. Okay, so focus on Ethereum. You can use those skills for lots of other blockchains as well. Focus on Solidity. You need to know that for Ethereum development. And also you can take that programming language and put it on multiple different blockchains. Now let's talk about a secondary programming language, either JavaScript or Python, because whenever you're creating smart contracts, you're building blockchain applications, you're probably going to have to do other tasks besides just create the smart contracts themselves. You're probably going to have to write tests for the smart contracts at a minimum, write scripts for them so you can put them on blockchains or maybe automate certain tasks with the smart contracts themselves, and then also create user interfaces. So you can do that with JavaScript or Python in terms of the other tasks like you know writing tests, writing uh, uh, sorry, writing scripts. All right. Uh, but, so which one should you choose? Well, if you got a good reason to you know, choose Python, you're already a Python developer, maybe you could do that. But if you don't know either of these two languages, I highly recommend going down the JavaScript route for a couple reasons. One, it's more versatile. You can do more stuff with it, okay? So if you learn JavaScript, you're going to be able to create websites uh, and put them out there to talk to the smart contracts, create user interfaces. You can create mobile applications with React Native like I was talking about before. It's going to give you a lot of additional benefits uh, that Python's not going to give you. JavaScript is a lingua franca of the web. So if you want to essentially do some more stuff outside of blockchain, it's going to give you a good foundation for doing that. It also gives you the ability to specialize as a front-end developer if you wanted to do that into the blockchain ecosystem as well. So just a quick recap, highly recommend sticking with uh, Solidity um, for Ethereum development. You can transfer those skills to other things and then using JavaScript as your secondary language so that you can you know, do all these other tasks with smart contract development, also create user interfaces. And that's also going to give you the option to you know, specialize in maybe front-end development if you wanted to do that as well. It's a great way to get your foot in the door in the blockchain industry. All right, one last quick point that I want to make on this before we move on. I'm talking about investing in your skills in Ethereum versus something else is, again, investing in your skills is really important because you can't really get that time back, okay? You can always learn something else later, faster. But if you're going to invest in your skills, you want to invest in things with the least amount of risk. So because Ethereum has been around the longest and has gotten the most adoption, it stood the test of time. And that means it's probably going to be around for a lot longer as opposed to the other things that are newer that kind of come and go with the tides, okay? And, you know, there's there's lots of open roles for Ethereum. It's got the best opportunity out there with the least downside risk and the most history behind it. That's the last little point I wanted to make. On to the next section. All right, so now let's talk about all the tools that you need in order to become a blockchain developer. Okay, so before I was saying that, you know, if you're a beginner and you don't know what to do, or if you're, you know, transitioning to blockchain and you want to know the exact path that you go down the Ethereum ecosystem, uh, you use that blockchain, you learn Solidity. And so these are all the tools, libraries, frameworks that you're going to need to know in order to become a full stack Ethereum developer. Okay, so let's get into these one by one. So, of course, Solidity is the primary programming language for writing Ethereum smart contracts. So, again, Solidity is a pretty beginner friendly language to learn so if you're an experienced developer already you can pick it up pretty quickly um, if you're a new developer you can learn it pretty quickly as well so it's an object oriented high level language for implementing smart contracts it's turing complete so you can write fully fledged programs on it you can put it on ethereum you can also um, you know put it on multiple other evm compatible blockchains besides just ethereum if you learn this language you can do a lot of different things with it okay so uh, again, that's for blockchain applications, for dApps, for the actual smart contracts themselves. You can create Uniswap, you can create lots of different stuff. So the next thing is going to be having a secondary programming language like JavaScript. That's the one that I can recommend because you can write tests for the smart contracts, you can write scripts, 
You can uh, put your contracts on a blockchain and you can also write front ends that talk to your smart contracts because at the end of the day, most people are going to want to have some sort of user facing application that they can, uh, you know, click a button on and then talk to your smart contracts. So JavaScript is my number one recommendation for your secondary programming language for doing that. Okay, then let's talk about actual smart contract development frameworks. So if you're brand new and don't know what a framework is, basically a framework is just a set of tools on your computer that lets you build blockchain applications quickly without having to do everything, you know, by hand. So a smart contract development framework is going to let you have a place to store the files for your smart contract code, also to write tests for the smart contracts, write scripts for them, and then put them on a blockchain all inside of a single project on your computer that this framework knows how to understand and manipulate. So let's look at some popular ones. So one of the most popular smart contract development frameworks is the hard hat framework, okay? So this is, you know, the Ethereum development environment for professionals. Again, hard hat's gonna let you do everything that I talked about previously. You can create Solidity smart contracts inside there. You can save in a project computer. You can compile them. It's got really good debugging tools. So hard hat was the first uh, framework to introduce console logging into Solidity smart contract with their special library. Okay, it's got tons of plugins that you can add to your, um, you know, frameworks that you can extend it to do all kinds of stuff that it doesn't do out of the box. It's, you know, supports TypeScript and so much more. Okay. So also, uh, Truffle is another option. So Truffle is an OG in the space. It's a uh, smart contract development framework that pretty much does every different, it pretty much does everything that Hard Hat does, um, minus maybe a few things, but also additionally a few things that Hard Hat doesn't do out of the box, okay? It just has a little bit different philosophy and how it structures this project, how it runs it, the libraries that it supports outside the box. So Truffle is another great option in addition to Hard Hat. So if you don't know which one to pick, uh, which one should you use? Well. I'll tell you what I personally use on most of my projects and also most of the tutorials that I've been doing lately on my YouTube channel. I've been using Hard Hat, and the biggest reason for that has just been demand, okay? So most of the projects out there right now in open source repositories are using Hard Hat. If you look at the NPM downloads, you'll see that uh, Hard Hat has more weekly downloads than Truffle does. And for me, just to you know make sure that I'm educating you all on the most relevant in-demand uh, frameworks in the marketplace. Uh, I'm personally using Hard Hat for that reason. And if you don't know which one to pick, that's what one I recommend, okay? But Truffle's a great one too. No, no, no problem there. Okay, so now let's talk about um, uh, fully-fledged IDEs, okay? So Truffle and Hard Hat are, are frameworks that are on your computer where you manage all the files locally, okay? But let's talk about a browser-based IDE. So that's where Remix comes into play. So if you want to create smart contracts all in your browser without having to install anything on your computer, you can do that with Remix. So this is a smart contract IDE that's put out by the Ethereum Foundation, okay? So you can create smart contracts inside of here, okay? You can see just a simple example right here, okay? And then you can take this smart contract, you can compile it inside your browser, you can connect your wallet like MetaMask, and you can deploy it directly to a blockchain live out there uh, directly from your browser. Or you can use a fake blockchain inside your browser uh, that just runs inside your browser with Remix so that you can test things out so you don't have to pay any gas fees if you're just trying to you know, play around with something for development purposes. Then Remix is a great option to do it all inside your browser. All right, so that's an example of how you can do stuff with Remix. Now let's talk about JavaScript libraries that you definitely want to know if you're trying to create blockchain applications. So let me tell you why you need them in the first place. So, you know, before I was talking about, you know, you're using your MetaMask wallet. So, you know, let's take an example of, you know, the Uniswap application. Again, the most popular application out there on the blockchain. You connect with your wallet, you go to the website, it talks to the blockchain and the smart contracts on the back end. So let's talk about what each piece here does. So your MetaMask wallet, basically, the reason you have to have it is, is it turns your web browser into a blockchain browser. Most browsers don't support blockchain connectivity out of the box. You need an additional extension like MetaMask to sign transactions and authorize you know, activity on chain and hold cryptocurrency in your account. All right, the website's in JavaScript, it runs out there, but you know your, your JavaScript website is not going to talk to the blockchain out of the box either. So MetaMask turns your browser into a blockchain browser, but you need a special library to turn your website into a blockchain website so that it can talk to the blockchain. And that's where uh, Web3.js and Ethers.js come into play. These are two JavaScript libraries that let you talk to the blockchain, primarily from your website. You can also do it on backends. You can do it inside scripts, but most people are using it for uh, front-end interactions. So let's look at those one by one. So you know, Web3.js is a 
JavaScript library, uh, excuse me, the, yeah, uh, Ethereum library for JavaScript. Basically, you can do things like uh, talk to smart contracts. You can create JavaScript versions of them so you can call their functions. You can deploy smart contracts with Web3.js. Uh, you can you know, authorize cryptocurrency transactions. You can pull information from the blockchain, like the latest blocks, all the transactions, all that type of stuff. You can wire it up directly to an Ethereum node. You can do the same thing also with uh, Ethers.js. This is another popular option. Same type of stuff, you know, create JavaScript versions of the smart contracts, um, talk to them, turn your front end website into a blockchain website. Now, if you're totally starting from scratch, you don't know which one to choose. Um, again, I'll tell you what I'm primarily using. I'm primarily using Ethers.js, okay? I've used both, just like I've used Hardhat and Truffle, uh, but I'm primarily using Ethers.js for the same reason that I'm primarily using Hardhat versus Truffle, which is um, just adoption and demand, okay? If you look at like weekly downloads of the Ethers.js library, they have exceeded uh, the Web3.js library. I just see more developers using uh, Web3, excuse me, using Ethers.js over Web3.js. And so for that reason, I wanna personally keep my skills relevant and teach you all uh, what most people are using, and that's primarily Ethers, okay? So Web3.js is a great option. Um, again, you're not gonna go wrong if you do that, but if you don't know what to learn, I highly recommend learning Ethers. Again, at the end of the day, if you learn one of these things, it's gonna be really easy to transfer over to the others. But um, if you look at any of the tutorials that I've done lately in my YouTube channel, I'm primarily using Ethers for the blockchain connectivity in JavaScript. So those are the JavaScript libraries. Let's talk about wallets, okay? So probably the easiest wallet to get started with uh, that you're gonna use the most as a blockchain developer is MetaMask, okay? So MetaMask is pretty straightforward. You can install it uh, on the Google Chrome Web Store in a matter of a few clicks and set it up instantly. That's what's gonna turn your browser into a blockchain browser. It's gonna let you hold cryptocurrency in your wallet, store your private keys and authorize transactions on chain, and then use your blockchain websites that you're developing. Uh, MetaMask is the easiest, most obvious choice to learn there. Now let's talk about development blockchains, okay? So, uh, and whenever you're creating smart contracts, you're gonna wanna have something running locally on your computer, okay, where you can deploy your smart contracts and like interact with them and simulate how they would work on an actual production blockchain environment. And that's where something like Ganache comes into play. So D Ganache is uh, put out by Truffle. So it's linked with the Truffle project that I was talking about before the framework. And basically it's just a blockchain that runs on your computer that's like throwaway. You don't have to pay any real cryptocurrency to use it. Um, you can just you know test things out uh, for low risk. You can keep you know deploying smart contracts with, with no real overhead. They have a really nice point and click blockchain. It's got a graphical user interface. You can uh, spin it up and see the account, see their private keys. Uh, really nice. So it also has a, a command line version, so you can do it in your terminal as well. Now, I'll also say if you use hard hat, it's also got its own blockchain that comes bundled with the framework itself. It's going to run only in your command line. If you're, if you're running tests, it'll just spin up in the background. And also you can just spin up the hard hat node in a separate terminal tab when you're developing your smart contracts that way. It's basically, it ships with a um, development blockchain out of the box. You don't have to install one separately. All right, so next let's talk about you know, front-end frameworks. Again, you're gonna wanna learn JavaScript so that you can create user interfaces to talk to your applications. But in addition to that, you're gonna wanna learn some sort of front-end framework that's gonna let you basically create your applications quickly and also give you tools so that you can, you know, keep your uh, code organized into ways that you can reuse them and components and then do a lot of stuff just really fast. And so my number one recommendation for that is going to be React.js, okay? So this is a JavaScript library for building using user interfaces. Um, you can do things like keep track of component state. Um, I'll get into more of the details on how React works a little bit later in the video, but my number one recommendation for front-end frameworks is definitely use React. It's one of the most popular ones in the Ethereum ecosystem. And again, that, you know, translates to lots of other ecosystems like these Ethereum compatible uh, chains, et cetera, et cetera. So definitely, if you don't know what to learn from the front end frameworks, definitely choose React. That's the one I primarily use and support on my channel if you go follow any of those uh, tutorials or if you're inside the blockchain bootcamp. And then finally, the last major thing to know about here is just Node.js. So what is it? So Node.js is really just a runtime environment for JavaScript that's on your computer. So what does that mean? Well, basically, you know, JavaScript is a language that's really for the web. So its native environment is to run in your web browser. But if you want to do other things with JavaScript, like write tests for smart contracts, you know, write scripts, you need a way to run JavaScript on your computer, not in your web browser. And that's what Node.js lets you do. You can create any arbitrary, you know, JavaScript program and run it with Node. Um, and that's you'll need that for smart contract development. And so that's primarily what Node lets you do. It also gives you Node Package Manager or NPM. 
So anytime you're downloading a framework or installing uh, third-party libraries like you know, Ethers.js, for example, you're going to use the Node Package Manager or NPM to download those and install them. And that comes bundled for free with Node.js. All right, so now let's talk about an actual step-by-step -step plan and put all this together so that you can go from knowing nothing to becoming a blockchain master, whether you're an experienced developer already or you're just starting over from scratch, you know, as a new developer. Both of these steps are basically going to apply no matter where you're starting from, okay? So, Here's a preliminary step. If you're just totally new to blockchain and you've never even used a blockchain application before, then that's really your first step. So here's what I highly recommend doing. All right. Now, this basically involves getting a little bit of cryptocurrency and then actually using some blockchain based applications with decentralized finance or DeFi or maybe some NFTs. So there's going to be a little bit of risk in this. You want to use a very small amount of money, whatever that amount of money is to you, five. 10 50 dollars i don't know right but basically you're gonna want to go sign up for a cryptocurrency exchange website like coinbase.com for example okay you can pick which one whatever you want to use whatever support in your jurisdiction and then you want to set up a metamask wallet like i was talking about before so make sure you install metamask in the google chrome web store connected to your browser and then you want to take some cryptocurrency maybe like some ether for example and then just transfer out to your wallet you need to understand what that user experience is like so you can understand just how to use a blockchain how to make basic transactions between wallets so that you experience what that's like before you try to build the applications yourself okay and then what you're going to do is just go to an application like uniswap and then take your ether and, you know, maybe whether it's $1, whatever it is, and just swap it for a different token, like uh, a stable coin, like USDC, for example, just swap ETH between uh, USDC, watch what happens whenever you click the button, you know, confirm the transaction with MetaMask, see how to get that transaction confirmation in the receipt, and how to look at it on a block explorer, like Etherscan, for example, that's going to just show you what it's like to use a blockchain based application in the first place. You know, the, another option is that you could buy an NFT. If you want to do that instead, you don't care about cryptocurrency on a website like OpenSea. It's the same basic steps. You need to go to a cryptocurrency exchange website, uh, you know, buy a little bit of cryptocurrency, transfer out to your wallet, and then go purchase an NFT. You can find a really low cost one on here and then store that in your wallet. Just see what that looks like to do it with MetaMask. Now, I'll give you an additional um, you know, alternative if you don't want to spend a lot of money. I know that the fees on Ethereum can be high sometimes. So you can use Uniswap on multiple networks, okay? Same thing for OpenSea. You can see all the different uh, networks supported here. You could use a lower cost chain like Polygon, for example, okay? You could also do this completely for free. You could do uh, Uniswap and many of these other applications run on Ethereum test networks. Again, Ethereum supports multiple different environments. You can use a test network where the cryptocurrency is totally free, doesn't cost you anything. You can just request those funds from a faucet and do it at no cost to you. All right, so that's the initial preliminary step is just learn how to use blockchain just as an end user, right, before you become a developer. Now, how do you become a developer? Let's talk about the concrete step-by-step -step plan of doing that. So the first thing that you want to really understand when you're learning blockchain is that you want to learn it like a foreign language. And so what's the best way to learn a foreign language? It's through immersion. Okay, it's basically getting inside that language and learning to talk to other people and then, you know, go interact with other people in that culture. And that's the fastest way to become proficient in that language. So programming is the exact same thing. So what does that mean? Well, basically, it means that you're going to learn by doing, you're actually going to learn the programming languages while you're building real world applications. Okay, and then you're going to go do that and interact with other developers so that you can increase your skills way faster. Because most people do this the wrong way. They try to go learn a bunch of other programming languages by themselves, you know, in isolation, and then they don't have the context to see how that actually works when they're creating an application. Because one of the most, what's the most common thing you hear in school when kids are learning new things, they say, when am I ever going to use this? Okay. If you're learning a programming language, just like by itself, you're going to ask that question all the time. But if you learn those programming languages while you're creating applications step-by-step, step, you know, guided with an expert, then you're going to see exactly how that stuff works. And you're never going to ask a question like, you know, why am I using this? You're going to see exactly why in process, it's going to be way faster, way more efficient. So how can you learn through immersion? Well, I've broken this down into a couple different steps. So the first step is what I'm going to call guided development. Okay, so this basically looks like going over the shoulder with somebody who knows what they're doing, and they can show you how to create an application step by step start finish, and you learn the programming languages as you go. So I'm going to point you towards some great resources right now that's going to use that exact method. So you can go to my YouTube homepage. Um, that might be where you're watching this video. I've probably got this video pinned to the top of my YouTube homepage. Uh, if not, you can just click through to my YouTube homepage with the description down below. 
And you can see there is a playlist called free develop free blockchain development courses. I've got lots of different courses that teach you here uh, this exact method. They're like the Udemy course, but they're totally free. They're a couple hours long, and they're going to show you how to create blockchain applications and teach you the programming languages as you go, all the concepts. So here's an example. This is a code of web 3.0 real estate application like Zillow step by step. So if you do this particular tutorial, basically it's going to show you how to create a blockchain-based real estate marketplace like Zillow, but on chain. So you're going to learn the basics on how does blockchain work. You're going to learn how to create the smart contracts with non-fungible tokens or NFTs to actually do a real estate transaction on chain, show you how you can buy and sell houses this way. Okay. It's going to cover all the, you know, uh, concepts like how does the blockchain work behind the scenes, what's happening with the smart contracts, what's happening with the browser, all that type of stuff. You would learn how to create this uh, front end application inside, um, you know, your browser with uh, JavaScript and React.js. You learn all that stuff as you go rather than trying to learn Solidity by itself and then go build an app or trying to go learn JavaScript and then build an app. You're gonna learn Solidity, you're gonna learn JavaScript, you're gonna learn blockchain uh, all in this, you know, few hour period. Okay, and you're gonna come out with a complete application that you can deploy live to the web and let other people start using, okay? So that's what I mean by guided development is going over the shoulder with somebody who can show you how to do all this stuff step by step and learn the programming languages as you go. Now, that's sort of like step one in the guided development process is to build something that's more of like a beginner level application. So all the tutorials that I showed you here on my YouTube homepage, these are kind of designed to be more beginner friendly tutorials that are going to show you, you know, the basics of how to build blockchain applications. And at the end of the day, you really have a tutorial project that you can show somebody else. It's a great way to get started. But after that, once you've kind of gotten your feet wet, you want to take, take it to the next level, uh, still in this guided development process, and then learn to build something that's more professional level, okay? Not just tutorial grade, but more professional level application that you might be asked to build uh, at a real world job. And the best way to do that is with an expert who's built multiple of these uh, in a professional uh, setting. And that's exactly like what I show you how to do inside the blockchain bootcamp is to create a professional level project. Like here's an example. I've got to pull up my screen here. This is a decentralized cryptocurrency exchange or a DEX where you can, uh, you know, trade real world tokens. It's like Uniswap, like I was talking about before, but works a little bit differently. You can see it's got like an order book. It's got a candlestick chart on here. It's got a really slick user interface. Uh, that's you know written in React JS. Okay, we code the Solidity smart contracts inside of uh, you know with with Solidity, uh, the Solidity smart contract Solidity. We we code the Ethereum smart contract Solidity. We put them on the blockchain. We write tests, scripts, all the type of stuff. Show you the best practice for doing that in a professional setting. And so, once you've gone through all that and you learn to build a professional application, uh, you will have done both of these things. You'll really have completed this guided development process. You'll have seen lots of examples on how to do things, what are the best practices, how on the programming languages with somebody else who's done it a lot, okay? Now, once you've gotten past this guided development phase, it's time to move on to the next phase, which is what I call unguided development. Because at the end of the day, nobody really becomes a professional developer just by following somebody else's step-by-step -step instructions all the time. At some point, you have to learn to write applications completely on your own, okay? And you have to uh, basically learn how to solve problems with code. That's what you're paid to do as a blockchain developer. So how do you do this? Well, the easiest way to get started is to take an application that you've already built, um, like maybe one of these, for example, or maybe like the blockchain bootcamp, for example, and then start adding features to it. Basically make the application do something that it doesn't already do. That's the easiest way because you've already created this thing with somebody else's help, and then you can make it just do something that it doesn't already do. Nobody gave you the instructions to do that, but you solve that problem with your own code, okay? That's the easiest way to get started. Now, what you're going to want to do, though, in the next step is to create something completely from scratch, okay? So this is where your real learning takes place because you're saying, all right, I have an idea for a blockchain application that I want to create. Let's say it's an NFT marketplace, for example. And you have to actually think through what's every single step that I need to do in order to create this NFT marketplace. Okay, I've got to create the smart contracts. Okay, how do I do that? Then I need to create these functions. I need to have these you know, structures, events, et cetera, et cetera, inside my application. And that's when you're going through that process of really solving the problems with code and you're getting those real world functional skills. Now, when you go down this path, you're inevitably 
going to get frustrated. You're going to get stuck. You're not going to do certain things, but that's okay. All developers go through this, but that's the pain that you're going to have to push past when you're learning this new skill that's going to make you an effective developer in the professional world. Everybody's got to do this. Everybody's got to go to Stack Overflow and start looking for answers. Everybody's using chat GPT nowadays. Maybe that's a resource that you're going to use you to maybe GitHub Copilot, who knows, right? But you need to be able to get yourself unstuck because that's a tremendous skill that you're going to need for your professional career. So once you've crossed that, and you can now, um, you know, create blockchain applications on your own, it's time to move on to the next step, which is what I'm gonna call portfolio, okay? So portfolio, I'm really gonna break down into two categories. One is a portfolio app, so a project that you created completely from scratch, okay? You're gonna do this for a couple reasons. Number one, it's gonna solidify your learning through that unguided development process that I talked about. That's when you really become a real developer is when you create that portfolio project from scratch. Let's say it's an NFT marketplace, okay? And then you wanna put that out there live on a blockchain, put the smart contracts out there, and then deploy the website live to the web so that other people can use it. And you're gonna send that link to your friends, let them use it, get some feedback on how it works. But then what you wanna do is you actually wanna use this you know, as your resume essentially to go start applying for jobs. And so the second half of this is to actually create a portfolio website, okay? So take that portfolio project that you put out there on a blockchain and then go take that and put it into a portfolio site. You just got some ideas here. Uh, these are different web developer portfolio sites, okay? But you could use the same thing for blockchain developer. The whole point here is you want a website that's basically gonna act like your resume. It tells people who you are, how they can contact you, but most importantly, it shows your portfolio projects that you've actually created from scratch. So you wanna put links to your portfolio so they can your your app so you can they can click out to it and actually use it with their metamask okay you want to put the source code for that out there on github and put a link to it on your portfolio website so they can see the code if they want to audit it themselves put any other relevant information on there like your social media handles right especially if you're posting about blockchain your linkedin all that type of stuff but then you're going to use this and this is going to be your primary resume that you're going to send to other people when you start applying for jobs now why is this super important portfolio is critical for a couple reasons. Number one is a lot of developers don't even take the time to create a portfolio website and portfolio projects. And so when you're sending that out to other people and you're applying for jobs, you know, it's going to instantly cause you to stand out from other people who are just sending out boring PDF resumes. If they see a nice portfolio that you took the time to create that sort of pre, you know, qualifies you and shows you who they are, what you're like to interact with, that's huge. So that's going to be stand out. The other reason is at the end of the day, most people just care about what you can do. They don't care as much in most cases about what your degree is, like whether you even went to college or not. They just care like, can you get into our pipeline and actually be productive? And if you can show them with your portfolio that you have the blockchain skills, then that's going to also help you tremendously when you're going out to get a job. So now let's talk about that step is how do you actually go out and get the job? Well, actually, first, let's talk about when should you start applying for jobs? Well, I'm going to give you a pretty counterintuitive answer here. Um, most people wait way too long to start applying for jobs. My simple rule of thumb is once you've gone through this process, like I was talking about before, once you've gone through the guided development process, you know, create some beginner applications, create a professional level application with somebody else's help, and then you have gone through the unguided development step and you have created a portfolio application that's out there on a blockchain that you wrote 100% yourself from scratch, and then you've put that into a portfolio website, that's when you're ready to start, uh, you know, marketing yourself and looking for jobs. And you may not get your first job just like instantly after the first application or something like that. But you want to actually go ahead and get that feedback because, you know, applying for jobs and landing them is a skill in and of itself. And what you, you want to like decrease the amount of time it takes you to land one. So you don't want to go off and code forever. Right. And then like spend way too much time on that and then have to learn the skill of applying for jobs, okay? You can still continue to build your developer skills while you're applying and then that's gonna decrease the amount of time it actually takes to land a job because most people wait too long and then, you know, it just takes longer than it has to. So let's talk about where can you find a job? How can you apply? How can you actually get one? All right, so how do you apply for jobs? Well, there's a lot of different ways to do this. I highly recommend, you know, doing a lot of these different strategies all at the same time to increase the likelihood that one of these is gonna stick the fastest, okay? So uh, the, the absolute best way to get a job is if you already know somebody who's a blockchain developer um, and works at a blockchain company that can vouch for your skills, that's the fastest way to do it, <laughs> okay? It's the best because they're just gonna say, hey, I know this guy or girl, whatever, right? And they, they're they great and like, let's just bring them on, all right? But most people don't have that option to them, but I wanna just state that out there in case you do have that option developed to, that's gonna be the most effective thing for you to do. But if you don't, what are the other options? Because this is what most people are gonna have to go through. So uh, there's lots of different ways. So 
You can go down the traditional route of just uh, looking on job posting websites to see who's hiring blockchain developers. You can get on traditional job posting websites like Indeed.com. You can look for different keywords like smart contract developer, blockchain developer, web 3.0 developer. Uh, you can look for full stack developer. You can search for the term blockchain and sometimes things will be mislabeled, but it's not obviously that it's a blockchain developer. You can also look on crypto specific uh, websites like cryptojobslist.com. This is a great one that I highly recommend uh, for looking for crypto specific jobs. You can filter by solidity jobs. You can filter by different developers developer, you know, specialties. That's a great one too. Okay. Now, another tip on job posting websites is that, you know, a lot of times job postings have a certain criteria and you're not going to meet all those criteria. But if you at least meet like 50, 60, 70% of that criteria, then I would apply anyway, because, you know, everybody wants all those criteria met, but not everybody gets all those criteria met. And sometimes people have to make a compromise on who they hire. And you might be a perfect fit, even though you don't meet all the criteria of the website. So don't don't let that, you know, filter. Now, if it says we need somebody with 10 years of experience, you know, senior expert, blah, 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 it's probably not for you. But if it's like, we need two years of experience, you don't have two years, you got one, then that's probably, it's probably okay. So the other thing I'll say is, uh, when people say they're hiring and they don't explicitly say they're hiring junior developers, they're probably still hiring junior developers, okay? Just because if they're hiring, they're probably hiring more people and they might even be willing to work with you if you can find a way to provide value to the company. So don't let that deter you away either. All right, so that's how you could go cold apply on either you know a, a regular job website like Indeed or a um, crypto-specific website like cryptojobslist.com. Now, there's lots of the options to you, okay? Uh, one great way is to go to hackathons, okay? So you can see different uh, hackathons out there like ETH Global. A lot of companies go to these things and they look at the developers who are presenting their projects and submitting. And a lot of people get hired from hackathons. It's a great way to network. It's a great way to find companies who could uh, see you and what you can do and they're basically interviewing you. Sometimes they might even offer you the job on the spot, okay? So hackathons are a great way to do that. Also, crypto conferences, not like cryptocurrency investing conferences, but blockchain development conferences like ETH Denver. That's one that's coming up around the corner at the time of recording this video. Okay. You can also go to in-person meetups. So you might look on a website like meetup.com, see if there's any blockchain developer meetups in your area. You might be surprised. Blockchain is growing quite a bit. And there's lots of local meetups that are going on, especially if you live in a major uh, metropolitan area. That's how I first got my work as a regular developer. I was already a developer before I got into blockchain, but I got my first uh, paying work as a developer by going to a meetup and just talking to people and saying like, hey, this is what I can do. I'm looking for a job. And I had a guy uh, hire me through that process. So it's a great way to get started as well. And now another great way to find jobs is essentially to just leverage the power of the internet and the ability to network with other people. So there's lots of different strategies for doing this, okay? Um, one is that you can get on like GitHub and see which projects are open source and like start making open source contributions to those projects. And you might be able to get in with the team and like start talking to them and see what they need. A lot of these projects also have Discord communities available to them. So you can get into the Discord community, start talking to the developers and try to go in there and actually provide value. Don't just go in there and be like, hey, I need a job, right? Like try to actually provide some sort of useful value and that relationship can develop over time and that can lead to hiring conversations, okay? So another way is to leverage LinkedIn. All right, LinkedIn is a very powerful tool. I highly recommend whenever you're creating your portfolio project, like talk about it on LinkedIn. Because what happens is recruiters pay a lot of money to be able to search all of LinkedIn for developers who are like creating content on there and they will look for you, they'll find you and you're gonna be surprised. Like you're gonna start getting messages from recruiters that are interested in what you're doing and that could you know, lead to hiring conversations as well. Now that does lead me to the last thing is you can also talk to independent recruiters who can work on your behalf to find you know opportunities in the industry. And that's a good opportunity as well. So those are all the different ways you can try to get a job. I mean, there's, there's that just scratched the surface. There's also more tactics than that, but that's that's a good overview. Now, ideally, you want to pursue multiple strategies at the same time because the more irons in the fire that you have, you know, the, the higher likelihood that you're going to get hired faster. Okay, so now let's talk about if you're a brand new developer, all right, and some realistic expectations that you should have going into this process. So the truth is, um, if you go create a portfolio and you apply, like the very first application you send out is probably not going to instantly land you the job. Okay, so here, here's why. So first of all, you know, you, you got to send out a lot of applications in order to really even get uh, an additional, you know, initial interview. And then even if you get that initial interview, you may not make the cut because here, here's the the truth. I'll just be straight up with you. Like, um, you know, as as a beginner, 
like who doesn't have any experience, like you want to get that experience outside the workplace by creating your portfolio, showing people what you have and what you can do. But at the end of the day, like somebody has to take a chance on you to give you that first shot. All right. Not everybody's going to do that. But the more places you apply, the more people you talk to, that's going to increase the likelihood that you're going to find that person who's going to give you that shot, let you come in their pipeline. What you really want to show is that you're going to put your best foot forward. You're going to do whatever it takes to learn what you need to do in order to get that job done so that you can provide value because that's ultimately what they're going to pay you for. And now the other thing here you can do to get your foot in the door is just uh, lower your expectations in terms of salary, okay? My advice to people is always just find out, you know, whatever you need to comfortably cover your bills. And if you can get that number to get your first job, then that's great because now you're working in blockchain and you're on your path towards becoming a much more highly paid blockchain developer. You know, you can increase your salary a lot faster once you've got that industry experience under your belt. And then you could ultimately just go apply for the job later once you've got some of that experience under your belt. And then, you know, that, that's going to help a lot faster. So, you know, if you're a total beginner, apply to as many places as possible. Try to talk to as many people as possible. That's going to increase the likelihood that you're going to find that opportunity. You know, just lower your expectations because you're going to get that experience. That's going to be tremendously valuable for you. And if you get rejected, the other thing I'll say is that try to use that rejection as a constructive experience. So I know it's it's really sucks to get rejected. It never feels good. I don't like getting rejected. But the most productive thing that you can do with it is learn from it. So what you can do is you can try to ask them, you know, hey, why wasn't I qualified for this position? All right, they may not give you an answer. But if they do, then you can take that and then just go learn that thing while you're continuing to increase your skills while you're still applying for more jobs, okay? And then if you just continue this process, then I firmly believe that anybody with just enough aptitude, which if you're watching this YouTube video, you're barking up the street, you probably do have the aptitude. I'll say this, if you, if you like doing it and you can create a portfolio app, you've got the aptitude. You just gotta put in the time towards actually getting that job. And if you rinse and repeat this, eventually something's gonna land and you're gonna be able to go down this path. It's definitely worth it. And because so once you finally land that job, it's time to celebrate and yeah, start your career as a blockchain developer. All right, so now I'm gonna answer some frequently asked questions that I get all the time. All right, these are some of the top ones. So number one is should I learn blockchain first or do I need to go learn a bunch of other programming languages like general web development or general computer science fundamentals before I start learning blockchain? So my, my short answer is absolutely no. Like you should learn blockchain first if that's your goal is to become a blockchain developer because it's more efficient that way. A lot of people are biased in how they learn things, okay? I actually had to change my opinion on this over time. I used to think that you had to go learn a bunch of other stuff, but I had to change my opinion after I helped other people learn this from scratch, okay? So why does it work? Well, basically, you know, you want to learn things through immersion, like I was talking about earlier in this video. The fastest way to learn a foreign language is to go, you know, be immersed in that culture and learn the language, like while you're talking to other people. It's the same thing with software development. So if you're trying to learn programming languages or other types of development outside the context of using blockchain, it's too slow. The faster way to do it is to learn blockchain as your first language or technology stack, okay? If you're trying to become a blockchain developer, which I highly recommend that you do. Now, that kind of goes into, can you learn it as your first language? You know, that that sort of answers that question as well, okay? I highly recommend that you focus on Solidity as your first language, and then you learn JavaScript for building blockchain applications as you go, all right? Focus on Solidity, learn the other blockchain stuff like, like JavaScript as you go, all right? So the next uh, major FAQ that I get all the time is, do I need a degree in order to become a blockchain developer? So the short answer is no, you do not, okay? Guess who does not have a computer science degree? I do not have a computer science degree, okay? So primarily, uh, you know, most people just care about what you can do. That's what you can show them whenever you create that portfolio, whenever you get the skills on your own as a self-taught developer or with a coding bootcamp, okay? So again, I didn't go to coding bootcamp. I got rejected for coding bootcamp. I had to teach myself on my own. I've helped lots of other people uh, do that. So you can see lots of student success stories on my YouTube homepage. Again, you can see those free blockchain development courses, but you can also scroll down here, see the student you know, success stories about, you know, Bavon was making over $100,000 per year uh, at his first blockchain developer job without a degree. Uh, Cosimo got his first blockchain job in a matter of two months, okay, without a degree. And that's this one right here. Here's a, you know, less than one year. Uh, there's all these different stories, people with no computer science degrees who broke in the blockchain industry that I've personally helped uh, do that. And you can go check those out uh, to see their stories and how they actually did that. So now, Let's also talk about how long does it take to become a blockchain developer? This is another common question that I get. So the short answer is it depends, <laughs> okay? There's there's all types of different uh, factors that would go into how long it's actually going to take you. Now, I'll give you a range. So the fastest that I've personally see it, uh, have seen it is two months, 
All right, and you can go check out this video on my YouTube homepage, How to Become a Blockchain Developer in Two Months. You can see my interview with Cosimo. I helped him transition into blockchain and become a developer in two months. Now, he had quite a bit of time on his hands, okay? He was not working a job at the time, and so he could devote a lot of time to learning this quickly, all right? Now, you may not have that type of time on your hand. You may not have full time to learn. That's okay. And in fact, I, I highly recommend that you don't quit your job to learn blockchain. Like, keep working your job or whatever you're doing now and learn blockchain on the side in order to make that transition. That's the safer way to do things, okay? So, you have to look at the other factors in your life. Like, you know, do you have a full-time job? Do you have a family? Do you have kids? Are you married? Are you, you know, with a partner? There's, there's all these different things you have to ask yourself to see how much time do I realistically have to devote to this. So that's going to, like, that that pipeline is going to determine the total amount of calendar time. So, you know, how long will it take? Well, on the longer end of things, two months is the fastest. Maybe on the longer ends of things, you may set a goal of, like, one year, for example. But realistically, I think most people can do it in six months to a year. It just depends on how much time you're actually committed to doing it, you know, on a regular basis towards achieving that goal. So... Um, if you want blanket advice, you know, really easy thing to do is just to set a target deadline of one year. I think it's very realistic for pretty much anybody who's really interested in learning this to accomplish it in one year's time, okay? Because it's good to have a goal. You want to have something that you're working towards. You don't want to stress yourself out if you can't meet the goal in, in amount of time. But then what you want to do, well, the other thing about a goal is because, you know, work tends to take the amount of time that you give it. And so if you say, I'm going to do it in this amount of time, like you're probably going to find a way to do it in that amount of time rather than just aimlessly working off in a direction without any real goal in mind. It's better to just have a goal. So um, the other thing, once you've got that goal, is to break it down into logical chunks. So, you know, you want you want to think about, you know, what's your bandwidth on a weekly basis and then what do you have to do towards actually progressing to do that? So everything I'm talking about in this video, going through the unguided development process, you know, creating those tutorial applications, building a pro-level application like into the blockchain bootcamp, building your portfolio application, building a portfolio site. You need to sort of have these objectives, you know, right, on the horizon and start working at these objectives one by one. So you can just estimate how long it's going to take you by saying like, okay, I'm going to go create this this um, initial tutorial app and I'm just going to do it on my regular schedule and see how long did it take me to do that, all right? So let's say that took you a week or two weeks, whatever, right? You have to see how much time it take you to do that and then just sort of multiply this across time to see how long it will actually take you to reach your goal. And that's going to be a good self-assessment. Now, now, you also have to think about this in terms of your time per week available. You know, not everybody has, you know, time available every single day to become a blockchain developer. If people have lives, I get that. But what you really want to focus on is consistency, is putting a lot of time in on a regular basis. Now, the best thing to do is to code every day, but not everybody can code every day. Life happens. Most people are probably going to be putting in, you know, chunks of time here and then maybe a little bit here and then a longer chunk on the weekend or something like that. That's fine too, but you want to be putting in most days per week, so a minimum of four days per week uh, as you're sort of working towards this goal, okay? And then you want to just build that momentum over time and eventually that's going to, you know, help you achieve that goal. And one other piece of advice that I would give you here is while you're learning to code, keep a timesheet, okay? This can be a simple spreadsheet just in a Google Doc somewhere where you log in the day that you sat down to work on something, you describe what you did, and then you put in the total amount of time that you spent in either hours or minutes, okay? And then you keep a running tally of that and you total up the total amount of time that you've spent working towards this goal. I personally did this when I was becoming a developer and I also coach lots of other people to do this exact same thing. Here's why it's important. Number one, it keeps you accountable. So you'll actually see when you uh, sat down to do stuff, you could send your timesheet to somebody else so that they can help hold you accountable if you're kind of in this together and you want somebody else to help you actually achieve this goal, okay? But the other thing it's going to do is give you a sanity check because it's really easy to start learning this and think, oh, I spent a million hours doing this, but really you've spent like six hours doing it, okay, in total, right? You might feel like you spent an eternity, but you didn't spend that much time in the grand scheme of things. And a lot of people get in there and like pull their hair out and feel frustrated and want to give up when they spent maybe 20 hours total trying to learn blockchain development. 20 hours is nowhere even close to the amount of time it's going to take for you to become a proficient blockchain developer. And so you shouldn't give up if you see that number on your timesheet, okay? You know, I wouldn't start personally thinking about reevaluating your choices until you spent like hundreds of hours trying to become a blockchain developer. And that's something you can still realistically do across a multi-month 
uh, time frame, even if you're working a regular developer job. So definitely keep a timesheet when you're learning to become a blockchain developer. All right, so that's an overview of how to become a blockchain developer in 2023 step by step. Again, this is a really fast growing technology with a ton of opportunity for developers who want to break into the industry. Blockchain is one of the highest paying fields in tech. It's super remote friendly. You get to work from wherever you want to, and you get to build the future of the internet. This, this, I mean, what's not to love at this point? So, you know, that's the step-by-step -step roadmap on exactly how to do that from start to finish, from knowing nothing all the way to landing your, your job. So if you've really liked this video and you're like, man, I'm ready to just go all in. Of course, you've got the roadmap, but, but like, what should you do like right after you watch this video? Well, number one, you know, I spent a ton of time making this for you. I love doing this for other people to help them change their careers. The only thing that I ask in return is that you really smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. That really does help this video out. YouTube shows it to more people. So just go ahead and smash it, right? You know, just do it right now. Um, and then subscribe to this channel. You're going to see lots of other blockchain courses coming out that I'll be putting out in 2023. You're not going to want to miss those. So subscribe. And, um, you know, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find these free blockchain development courses that I was talking about so that you can do the unguided development. They're here on the YouTube homepage, free blockchain development courses. And if you like those and you're ready to take that next step in the process, like I was talking about in this video, to creating a professional level blockchain application, or like, hey, let's say you want to just jump in and go for the throat and then like, you know, become a blockchain developer as fast as possible, I can sure to do all that over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. Okay, that's the exact method that all these people went through to become real world blockchain developers, some of them just in a matter of months. Okay, you really don't have to be an expert. I've showed you everything in this video. You know, you can increase your salary uh, to 100K and beyond. I can sure to do that over there with a link down below. So that's all I've got. And until next time, Thanks for watching Dapp University.